but it's one of those That's things cool. you, you always talk about where you're like, there's just certain things we don't know about. <laughs> like it's just one of those things you can't really explain, you know, because there's all these different functions in the cell as far as proteins and enzymes and stuff like that. And then you have this kind of, and, and then you have this thing that just goes and does whatever the hell I mean, it wants. I, well, and it's like, wait a minute, how the heck is it? And, and the fact that it's in three different forms and it's moving across cell walls, very interesting stuff. Again, we don't want to get stuck on any one of these too much because we don't want to lose you guys. So let's move on to chlorine. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jug Dealers Podcast, all things cannabis and lifestyle related, brought to you by the good people at 5 8 We Five Are eight Distribution. We're back again in the Jug Den. And here today, we're here to talk about micronutrients, but first... A little word from my friend, Jay Hall. Yeah, you know, obviously we've been kind of doing this uh, every show here at the beginning and just kind of an open call out uh, to anybody that's out there uh, working in commercial situations. People are reaching out. It is. People are reaching out. So let, let's keep it going. The reality is we're going to be on the road a bunch. Uh, myself, Brandon, and Jair will be in Southern California the week of February 26th, running around the LA area. If anybody has any places we want to, uh, they want us to stop by, let us know there. Let's get to the show because we do have- Tons to cover. We have a lot to cover. We're going to start at the top. We're going to make it easy. We're going to start with boron. Boron, you know? which is not boring, folks. Let's talk boron. Go no. for it, Gabe. Why don't you give um, us a little- So it's B on the periodic table. It's an atomic number of five. It's 0. 0.001 of the Earth's crust. So as you know, we continue to talk about how much there is. Um, it exists as borax, um, which is basically there's different types borax. of stone. There's different yeah. types of stone, kernite, tin, calconite, tourmaline, which is a cool one. Um, commercial boron is pr- processed from arid regions. One of the most famous ones that I remember from the early 1900s, and they still actually use it today, is out in California. And I was, huh. we were, I, we were about to start talking about it before the show and I didn't want to get into it cause I didn't want to <laughs> tell the story, but it, it's interesting because, um, if you look, there's still boxes in the store. I saw one last night, um, but they have the 12 mule team or the 20 mule team borax <laughs> and it's in the old boxes. It's the same boxes it's ever been. And basically, um, you know, between there and Turkey, they produce 75% of the world's borax between those two places. So like we kind of like to bring up, this is one of those things that's pretty finite, you know, at 0.001% sure. of the earth's crust, well, it's not move, abundant. Like some no, of the other, you have to, you have to, you have to move through a lot of stuff for it. Right. A hundred percent. I think that's the biggest hundred percent so, history wise, obviously, you know, first extracted from dry lake beds in Persia makes sense. It's very old, was even used in, you know, and Tibet trade in Arabia thousand years ago, yep. you know, used even as part of a glaze for pottery and things like that. Um, so definitely one of those things been around for a long time, whether people knew what it was at that time or not. I'd say that's probably up for debate. Uh, we do know that w- that's what it is at this point. Largest producers, as you mentioned, Turkey, um, USA is as well. Both of those are 75% of the world's boron. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy to think about. And that's, that's a you know, th- there's definitely, as of July 2023, we're starting to look at a worldwide boron shortage, you know? So it's, and like we always, like we always talk about, you know, each one of these elements, regardless of how much or how little you need, it's necessary. As I remember, um, we have boron in the uh, there's in, boron in, in the in the in, in the, the silicium in the silicium. Yep, that, yep, absolutely. you know. So yep. and so, if you're ever wondering and you're looking at the bottle, you know, um, and you see that boron in there, that's one of the things. That- well, one, it is, is it, one, it is plant necessary, but but two, it, it you know, it does work as a bit of a carrier. So even how it comes as far as the form and where mm-hmm. it comes in, it comes with or without the absence Let's of do. calcium Let's and just, sodium. Yeah, it's dude, pretty interesting. What it does for plants, man, it's a component in the cell wall where it connects carbohydrates train chains. It plays a role in balancing the sugar versus starch and is involved with translocation of both. So it's basically mm. helping these things move around the plant. Super it helps, it helps transport potassium ions across the cell membrane, um, which we also know that potassium ions are directly involved in, in the opening and closing of stomata um, and being that K plus ion, right? Yep. So very easily exchanged for H plus, right? So obviously it has a very um, um, pH component tied to it and the way it's able to move across that cell. Well, membrane. and it's the only plant, it's the only mineral that doesn't need to be an ion to move across plant cells. Sure. You sure. know what I mean? So it doesn't have to, 
you know, combined with other things, it can just kind of move freely, you know, floater. So, it's a floater. So, so, you know, that's important to know basically for any, for it, for the plant available for them, it's going to be boric acid. Um, for you, if you're looking for symptoms of deficiency, you're going to look for damaging at the root tips or you're going to have a problem with fruit and flower formation. So that's really a way to kind of identify some of the deficiencies. But uh, again, as we talked before, the signs and symptoms and everything, mm-hmm. you know, we're, you're going to get into where a lot of these things are going to be pretty general. Yeah, and, that, and that's one of the thing when yeah. you look, you know, and even the book that I talk about at the end of the show, um, when you look at a lot of these different things, um, it, they can all be very similar, you know, the thing people need to be aware of as well is it is immobile in the plant. You know what I mean? So it's going to show your deficiencies. Once it's fixed, it is immobile. Correct. Yep. Yep. Uh, The way you're going to treat it is you could use borax, you could use a foliar spray. That being said, usually if you're identifying a boron boron, uh, deficiency, it's probably too late to deal with it. Well, yeah. And again, a lot of things we we say with any of these deficiency issues, one, know what the actual deficiency is, if at all possible, get, you know, leaf tissue analysis, sap analysis, things like that, which is not always Mm -hmm. the easiest thing to do, especially with cannabis. Um, But other than that, you know, take good notes and and do something different the next time. I know I keep, I say that all the time, but the reality is it's one of the most important and easiest things you can do. Now, before we move on to chlorine, I really found probably the most interesting thing of all this was the fact that it's the only mineral that doesn't need to be an ion moving to plants. Yep, yep. I think that alone uh, uh, warrants additional study, you know, so that hundred percent. And it's I'm one like, of those things you I'm talk going, and I'm no chemist. Bro, it's one of those things like, you Whoa. always talk about, but it's one of those That's things cool. you, you always talk about where you're like, there's just certain things we don't know about. <laughs> like it's just one of those things you can't really explain, you know, because there's all these different functions in the cell as far as proteins and enzymes and stuff like that. And then you have this kind of, and, and then you have this thing that just goes and does whatever the hell I it mean, wants. I, well, and it's like, wait a minute, how the heck is it? And the fact that it's in three different forms that it's moving across cell walls, very interesting stuff. Again, we don't want to get stuck on any one of these too much because we don't want to lose you guys. So let's move on to chlorine. Take it away, Gabe. What do we got for chlorine? Chlorine, you know, the symbol on the periodic table is CL. It's an atomic number of 17. It's the second lightest member of the halogen elements. It's the second most abundant element on the planet. It's the 20. A lot of it out there. Or second most abundant of the halogen elements, 21st most abundant element on Earth. Okay. It exists as a gas and it's extremely reactive. Yeah, we know that that Um, being that CL minus, it can do a lot of interesting things. Not some some good, some some actually pretty bad. Uh, Chlorine's obviously uses a cleaners that right there can tell you, Oh, it's real reactive. Mm-hmm. It's jumping mm-hmm. around doing some crazy stuff to, to be able to do cleaning like it does. You know, most common form is sodium chloride. People have been using it as f- far back as 6,000 BC. Um, you know, alchemists were doing it during medieval times. For those of you who don't know much about alchemy, people were trying to make metals and do all kinds oh, of different man. things. Well, back that was then. the thing, right? And trying to make gold. Really, like, trying, and honestly, we, got, we can make gold. We well, and this it. is it, when, when, when I did the Never research for this, this is when a lot of those people were isolating a lot of these elements and minerals and stuff. You go back. It's our buddy Humphrey Davy again confirmed it as a pure element in 1809. You know, so and this dude, obviously, when you start reading this dude between the late 1700s and the early 1800s, was really trying to isolate a lot of these things. Uh, the top, the top four producers, two are in the United States. So obviously, it's one of those things where we don't have to rely on other countries for it, like much of the other elements that we deal with, yeah, United Kingdom point. and South Korea are the other two producers of it. Plant available forms, as you already said, CL minus. CL minus. What it does for plants, it regulates water flow. It assists with the uptake of other nutrients. So again, it's kind of helping the situation out. Real reactive, Necessary. like we said too. Yeah. So from a chemistry standpoint, it's willing to hook up with a lot. It's it's a little bit of a, it's a little loosey goosey, right? It's willing to hook up. Necessary <laughs> with the yeah. operation of the stomata. You yep. know, that's really, you know, like I say to people, it's so important the, as far as how your stomata operate because it's how your plant is breathing. Thing. Sure. You know, and Absolutely. so that, it, and it's all tied to transpiration, which is going to be tied to nutrient uptake, mm-hmm. which is going to be, I mean, tied to metabolism. Um, it H- helps with the electrical space. balance of ions. Absolutely. Um, counterbalances the potassium in the operation of the stomata. Right, right. Cause the, 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 that's the other thing the, the, the K plus, K is, plus. What, is, yep. is what, what blows them up in the CL minus, yep. you know, we'll take them back down. And really I like to use chlorine, uh, chlorine is one of my favorite examples of what's a salt, right? Because everybody knows what table salt is, mm-hmm. but what is mm-hmm. a salt is a salt by definition. 
definition is anything that readily disassociates in water yep. into its ionic forms. Yep. So what we know, right, and why, why do we call it salt? It's because when it's in that little white form, that's NaCl. You put it into water, now it's a bunch of Na plus ions and Cl minus ions yep. floating around there. That's also why electroconductivity works in the way it does. It's shooting a little mini bolt of electricity essentially through there that's going from ion to ion. And by doing that, it's going, oh, I can now tell you how many ions are floating around in here. And by that, you know, uh, uh, that algorithm, I can say this is the, the electroconductivity, well, which funny. is also the scientific standard, it's by the funny. way. Screw PPM. It's, fu <laughs> it's, funny <you> talk <laughs> it's funny you talk about that because a lot of the processes in which they isolated a lot mm -hmm. of these elements was through electrolysis. You sure. know? So they were actually... You know, using it in reverse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So uh, it is immobile. On. It is immobile. I was going to say that symptoms of deficiency showing up in younger growth. Plant temps are turning bronze. Uh, leaves will be mottled. Different spots of chlorosis, things like that. Chlorosis being that yellowing, you know, of the leaves. You can also have interveinal chlorosis, not with this particular one. You'll see some modeling, but you still see that modeling, which is just kind of like, um, um, you know, yellow spotting that sort of thing. Um. Yeah, the defi when we when we looked up treating it, it basically you would need a you would need a specific fertilizer for right. that deficiency. A lot of people are not going to see that deficiency. You know, again, most of the, all the fertilizers that we use for anything, the chemists who put these things together know what we need. So. Right, 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 right. And again, not really common. Why? Because it is abundant out there. It is something that because it's 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 so loose, it's, mm -hmm. you know, around on a lot of other different elements, you know, from a chemical standpoint, um, you know, again, would need a very specific fertilizer if you wanted to. Um, so there it is. That's chlorine. Moving on. Copper. 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 I'll, I'll run with copper here for a little bit. One of your uh, favorite mountains. Well, it is one. <laughs> of, I love the rollers at copper. You know, as a skier, I do, I do love me some, you know, some American flyer and, you know, whatever. And and, late, and later in the episode, we talk about molybdenum <laughs> right up the moat. Road, road is the climax. Hey, mine. hey, hey, hey. All right. So symbol of CU, atomic number 29. It is a metal. Whoa. All right. You Shocker. Um, it's been used as an ore for thousands of years. Again, um, you know, it's in many other metals. That That's not a shocker. In fact, I believe. That yeah, they used to I, use I would figure most people copper. know what copper didn't is. They, didn't they used to try and use copper to make gold? Part of the whole alchemy mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, part yeah, of the alchemy yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. They were trying to turn uh, it into gold. <laughs> right, which no, never worked. Um, largest producers, how it's sourced. They are open uh, open pit mined. Chile produces 30% of the world's ore. Top producer. Um, so that leads me to believe it's coming out of mountainous areas. Mm -hmm. uh, large mines in Utah and New Mexico. Yep. Go figure. Indonesia. Peru, although copper has been used for 10 thousand years. Believe it or not, 95% of the copper ever mined has been done since 1900. That's wild. That is kind of wild. You know, and it's kind of like aluminum where 80% of the copper that's ever been mined still exists. I think, See, now I think that's why I think aluminum recycling. That's dude, wild. I think aluminum, like 90 or 95% of the aluminum that's ever been harvested is still, it's still here, still in, in the... circulation. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild to think about most of what we see as far as copper out there. And what we're talking about is a little bit different than what we use for plants. Sure. We use copper sulfate for plants. Um, you want to get into what it does? Let's. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, it's a key component in enzymes used in oxidation and the reactions that occur during photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis and respiration being the opposite sides of of the uh, of the chemical equation, right? So everybody talks about photosynthesis, but you need the the essentially the opposite and balanced reaction on the other side. And these right? enzymes and proteins they act as like regulators. And they stuff do. Like that. And, and the thing about enzymes is, you know, enzymes aren't necessary for for a chemical process to happen. But what they do is, especially if it's the right tertiary shape and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. Right. Which just means that it can it can hook up in the right ways with the with the right charges in the right places. Anyway, what it does is it just makes a chemical process going to happen anyway, happen more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons uses you love to see. Yeah, uses less it, energy you know? to do it. Something like the green sensation, for example, uh, from Plager and one of the really unique things about it and what actually, because if you look at the technology, it's like, what the, what's the tech that makes that a couple hundred dollars a liter? Well, I can tell you, sure, it has a uh, P and K and it's 089. It's uh, it has a, it's an iron supplement, which again, we'll talk about being an essential part of chlorophyll production. So it keeps the plants nice and green, praying towards the lights, all that good stuff. Uh, it's also pectinase, beta glucanase and cellulase, which we've talked about earlier being there to fully break down a plant yep. cell wall, being a double cell wall with pectin in between. But on top of that, and really where the technology is, because by by the way, everything I've just set up to this point is not worth two hundred dollars in a liter. Um, however, <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just, I'm honest. I'm sorry. Uh, but what beyond that, the real technology behind it is it has an additional enzyme that actually lowers the activation energy that a plant needs to create its own indole three acetic acid, its own auxins. Mm -hmm. So rather than going in and putting in a stranglehold or trying to, you know 
boost something synthetically. We go in and just help the plant do it um, more efficiently itself. So, yeah. again, and like we th- talked about an in, in the IPM episode, it's plants being efficient. Well, and that, you know, strong plants doing their thing, like plants really have an amazing, I mean, the thing is they have to have an amazing ability to take care of themselves because they never get to they, move. They don't need us. If I'm hot, I go in the shade. If a plant's hot, oh, now what? You know what I mean? Does it have enough uh, uh, trigger pressure to be able to open and close the stomata and, and transpire, uh, uh, you know, harder to be able to move water through it to keep their core temperature down? Again, I don't want to get too into this stuff, but it, it's like, that's what makes plants so incredible. And things like systemic acquired resistance to be able to to ward off um, um, uh, insect invasions. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the fact that a plant is terrestrial, SAR but yeah, SAR yeah. response, the fact, that it's, the fact that it's terrestrial, but never gets to move. I mean, it, and, and can complete its entire life process and make its own food. That's and the, amazing, and, and the thing that people need to understand the most is that this balance that we're talking about. Right. And the reason we talk about these elements is because it is a balance and solubility availability oh, yes. is, is the most important thing. So like, just because someone says it has iron or copper or anything's in a bag, doesn't mean the plant can take it because How it comes in. What yeah, form it, is it, it coming yeah, in? Yeah, 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 is it an organic form? Is that, it an inorganic form? And obviously not everything comes like that. Really those things is kind of a weird term. It just means carbon based or not carbon based yep. from a chemistry standpoint. So I try not to get too tied up. It's like on when that, we talk about salts, like we don't tell people new millennium, it's not salts. We just tell them it's in water. Well, 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 right. It's, 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 it's salts that are floating disassociated around and that or a soft rock mineral, which is like all the things like I talked about, like phosphorus and potassium and, and things of that nature. And calcium, it's it's et funny the terminology of the people days, these days, just because it's like, I sell salts. I just sell them with a carrier. Well, is, are they dehydrated salts or they exactly, hydrated salts? Exactly, a- anyway, exactly. and I digress. Uh, okay. Just talk about it also is in enzymes that build amino acids and the proteins plays a key role in the synthesis of lignin. And as we always like to say, if it's mobile or immobile, this one is immobile. So generally you're going to see those deficiencies looking towards the top of the plant. You're going to see curling and le- some, some, the leaves on some of the plants, excessive branching and others. Uh, but a you know, witch's broom even kind of look, which is yep. kind of a specific kind of thing. It's like excessive branching, like we said, but again, it's that chlorosis, you know, being, being part of that chlor. But as you can see, it's, it's very much a part structurally in all, all sorts of building block things. So mm-hmm. even though it's used in a small amount and it's, Heavy metal, it's obviously very important. How do you treat the deficiency? Uh, fuller feeding copper sulfate is really the way to do it. That's yep. the fastest way to do it. But again, with us here in cannabis, typically it's just about giving things a very balanced nutrient program so that it's there from the beginning. Deficiencies on an annual plant, especially a very quick turning annual plant like we deal with, can be rather difficult. So take good notes, pay attention, change things if you need to next time around. Iron, here we come. Dude, iron's like... Iron's one of the best. Iron. <laughs> Iron's Iron. one of the best. It's one of my favorites because it's it's just one of the ones. It's easy to talk about, and you know, you know, deficiencies show up. The symbol on the periodic table is Fe. It's atomic number twenty six. It's a metal, obviously. Uh, it's the most common element on the Earth by mass, just ahead of oxygen. Wow. The fourth most common in the elements crust. So there's no shortage of it. We've used it for ten thousand years in 10, all and all kinds. That's, and that's of, as far as we I mean, know. It's yeah, probably even more. Yeah, I mean, we've done it in all kinds of. Different different in all kinds of different things, you know, as far as metal is concerned, how it's processed is it's mostly surface pit, pit mined. The deposits date back 1.8 billion years. That's what the beef, which, it, you know, B, if, if you know, like when we've talked about, you know, uh, you know, phosphorus is 20 million years old. Potassium is 400 mil up to 400 million sure. years old. And then you have this thing that's 1.8 billion. I was blown away. Most of the meat, most of the iron on the planet is from meteorites, which again, I was like, dude, I wasn't expecting I that. I really wasn't expecting <laughs> that. <laughs> was not, I mean, not. we're talking, we really put space dust on it, our planet. Uh, and it was all formed Sick. in supernova of nearby stars. So when stars go supernova, that's how the, the low Lower elements transform into the higher elements, and iron is one of the ones that can't form unless a star, a star goes kaboom. Dude, kaboom. It's, it's so cool. It really is. Um, that, that's why, and you know, I was just, uh, I can't remember what I was watching. I was watching a podcast the other day talking about mining mm-hmm. meteorites, right? Actually, yep. you know, it's like, well, all the metals are there. Like, yeah, it's it, crazy. It, it's crazy. It, that's one of the but, things SpaceX is working on. Yeah, is mining those I mean, things. you yeah. think about it, plants need this space, this space. Space dust. Yeah, Woo-hoo. it's crazy. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, most lower percentage is, is, uh, 
it's it's higher than most you see sure. from some of the other ones. Um, basically, what they do is they crush it down to a marble size. You know, they keep crushing it, like we've said in a lot of these other minerals. The one the one thing I thought was really neat is uh, they actually use magnets uh, to pull it out. To pull it out. That's crazy. You know, so it, they separate it that way. Then it goes through a slurry process. Um, the the world's largest iron producer is Australia, which again. I mean, to me, it makes uh, sense. You talk about the surface area and everything else and being yep. so abundant in the crust. And man, I mean, Australia is a huge It was place. probably getting pounded by meteorites at some point. Yeah, oh, I'm, uh, I guarantee it was getting beat Brazil, up. Brazil, China, India, Canada, USA. Is all big 10. countries because it's so available in the crust. And yep. It, yep. Okay, all makes yep. sense. Um, you know, what it does for plants. So the roots absorb it as Fe2 ferrous and Fe3 ferric. Which is also one of the things that makes it much like calcium, Ca2+, plus, Ca3+. Plus. Yep. It operates as a secondary messenger within the plant. That exchange of electrons is how a plant communicates And it serves as a carrier's electron yes. because they're just so easily yes. passed. Yes, you know absolutely. I mean? yep. Plays an essential role in oxidation. Um, redox reactions, redox oxidation reactions. reduction reactions. Those are fun. Used to make chlor used to make chlorophyll, which we always talk which about. I mentioned a Not ago, a part yep. of the molecule, though. Uh, no, it's it's actually there. It's an essential part of the production of chlorophyll. Yep, yep, yep. Right. So so kind of, but but not directly a part you know, of it. It's space dust. It doesn't space want dust, to be part. Uh, respiration, photosynthesis, enzyme reactions. It's important component of the enzyme used for nitrogen fixing bacteria. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria love the space rock. <laughs> they, I, I, you know, wow. Okay. You know what I mean? They, they, they love it. It's I do. Just, I, that, yeah, I, just, I think it's, it's the they, coolest they thing it. in the world. Like I really do. I, it's, it's unbelievable to me. Like, well, again, I, I look, that's one of the reasons I love plants and I love going through this. And this has been a, a wonderful journey, you know, that we've been going through with you guys. Cause trust me, we're going through this journey together. Too. Yeah. The, I mean, been, I'm learning this been, stuff right along it, here. It's been a lot of guys. fun for sure. There, there's a few things, you know, <clears> that, you know, that we know, but man, all these associations and really just how little we know about plants and everything else don't want to waste time talking about how little we know about plants because that is the exciting part. However, um, okay, uh, also is involved in the conversion of atmos atmospheric nitrogen and nitrate, so it relies on iron, which is, yep. which is quite interesting. Uh, iron is also important. The plants will release ions to lower the pH, so it rem remains available. Now, why that matters is because, from again, from a chemistry standpoint, in alkaline or basic soils, uh, iron is 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 unavailable, right? So here's an example. Anybody that's in a Colorado or in the arid west anywhere, go in and in, in the fall, look at uh, even in the middle of summer, you'll see a beautiful maple tree that looks almost yellow to the point where you literally feel like it's like, uh, and we should even pull up a pic of that, but where it looks so yellow, it's almost like it's the variety. Reality is it is so chlorotic that those green leaves that they should be are yellow completely. And it's not that iron's not in there because as we just mentioned, it's incredibly prevalent. Yep. It's that it's not available at higher pHs above seven. Mm -hmm. So that's why people will either use, you know, iron D EDTA, DBTA, things like that to make EDDHA. sure. And, and those are, those are chelated forms of iron that yep. can't get bound up in, you know, in the soil. So that makes sure that the plant gets it or the fuller feed it to get it straight. Dude, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, man. I had to, uh, I had to call Bo on that one. Oh yeah. Like, yeah, I was doing, I was doing the research for this episode and I really wasn't finding it's weird. Like you, you try and you try and figure some of this stuff out and there's, there's not a lot of information on some of this. So when you do, you, when you can't figure it out, you call in the big guns, you call in Bo, you call in Neil and you, you get them to answer some questions. Yep. By the way, we're going to have Neil on at some point. So that's going to be a yeah, lot little the, teaser for you. The new viewers out there that haven't heard us talk about Neil and Bo. They're the head honchos around five, eight. They're the guys that's formulating a lot yeah, of that they, new mill stuff. Yeah. So yeah. And, awesome. and they're the ones that have really taught us that where you source a lot of these things, makes a big difference you know uh the other some of the other some of the other forms are iron sulfate and ferrous sulfate mm -hmm. um you know Th those different forms can be more or less available depending. So yeah, absolutely. And that's one of very, the things very, very that very a lot dependent. of people don't know is like, you know, you look at a bag, it says iron. It's not telling you one of the, if it's one of these no. five forms and that, and they can be vastly available. And in going different back ranges. to, you know, what you've always said too, when you have any issues, like, again, like we're saying, you know, think, think a uh, horse is not zebras, right? Yeah. We'll go to that pH, right? And yeah, so check the pH, the pH is all first, screwed uh, up and you're all yellowed up and, and all of a sudden you're coming out a high pH. Well, there you go. And and again, iron is prevalent. It's there. Undoubtedly, yeah. it's there. It's are you able to uptake it, right? Yep. Um, same well, and thing. And let's talk about signs of deficiency. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, you do see them again, high pH, 
You see it also with used with too much calcium use. It actually creates some, uh, some bicarbonate ions, again, because iron is so reactive, so and calcium is so reactive, so they'll, they'll, they'll uh, and if they get those bicarbonate ions, it becomes unavailable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, soil being overly wet um, um, can infect iron uptake as well. Uh, chlorosis, like we said, which is lack of chlorophyll. So again, they yell like leaves. we talked about. Yep. So especially seeing the young leaves. And why is that? Again, because it's, it's immobile. immobile. Yep. 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 So treatment of deficiency, already kind of said it. Uh, check in pH, fuller feed with the chelated uh, iron, like we said. Uh, and then also you can um, you can uh, uh, feed into the substrate with like an EDT or something like that, which is a chelated form of iron as well. <laughs> So the next one we're going to talk ah. about is manganese. Manganese. Yeah. Not to be confused with magnesium. No, not to be confused <laughs> with magnesium. So the symbol's MN. <clears throat> the atomic number is 25. First isolated. It's a metal. It's first isolated in the 1770s. 0.1% of the Earth's crust. So there's more of it than there is of boron. But, um, but it is the 12th most no abundant iron. element in the Earth's crust. So quite a but, bit there. You know, it's still, it's still, you know, less than a lot of the other things we see. Uh, it occurs as different, different forms of stone. One of my favorites is the rhodochrosite. Um, yeah, I mean, in oh, the old rhodochrosite. You know, I knew, you, I knew you'd like that one. You know, historically it was used in iron and steel making. Uh, one of the cool things I thought is it was used as the pigment in old ancient pave, uh, cave, cave paintings. paintings. That, so I thought right. that was actually kind of cool. Um, and it was used in Egyptian glass. 80% of the world's manganese comes from South Africa. No way. Yep. Again, we're learning stuff here. 15 folks. billion tons. So again, so, it's one of those things where, you know, they, they got a grip on things. And if you look at some of the other countries, Brazil, Ukraine, Australia, India, China, what you don't see on that list is us. Which is know? interesting. I mean, because even like you say, 0.1%, but I also, it, I, here's the thing. And I'm just conjecturing a little bit here. You see nothing but big countries, but you also see countries with, except for Australia there, with relatively low labor rates. So you're having to move yep. a lot of material. Mm -hmm. It's probably a pretty basic process. You even a ton of material to get 0.1% of whatever you're moving through. Yep. So yep, anyway, yep. I'm just. Um, the plant yep. available forms are manganese sulfate. It's highly water soluble. Highly water soluble. So that's always a plus, especially if you have to deal with foliar and stuff like sure. that. Um, for plants, it's used to free oxygen during photosynthesis by accepting electrons from the water. And that's an interesting thing too, without going too much into it, but the polarity of water, yep. right? And 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 uh, of H two O and the way that it works, that's that's essentially the cornerstone of life itself, mm -hmm. um, because that is a very unique property of water. It's polarity. Look that up, and, and maybe that you know what that might even be a whole episode we'll talk about. And that's something I learned from uh, processing concentrates. You learn about polar and nonpolar solvents. All of a sudden, you realize like, oh, water's a polar solvent. Interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's used, it's, uh, works with certain enzymes as well to break apart carbohydrates, which is, uh, you so. know, carbs are, are a building block as well. So a lot of these, a lot of these micros seem to be again, involved in similar things, yeah. a lot of it building block types. And like we talk, and like we talk types. about the, the, the lack of having them cuts, cuts things off in the process and creates the bus. Uh, absolutely. Know? Okay. The, the bus in the middle of the road, cutting all the traffic off, because again, it's that law of the minimum thing, which we were, we are going to have, you know, a, a little bit more expanded episode mm -hmm. talking about these, these, you know, potential minimums that are there and how that really, you know, affects overall, uh, uh production, et cetera. So, uh, oh, good old manganese. What do we got here? What do we got here? Where are we at? Uh, oh, oh, that's right. So symptoms of deficiency are going to be brown, yeah, dead up. spots between the leaves, crinkled or curled wavy leaf margins, um, reduced shoot growth, intravenous chlorosis in the yellow leaves within the green veins. Uh, it is immobile. One of the things I actually thought was was uh, was interesting was MNSO4 can be used as a fungicide. So most of the times when you treat a deficiency for this as well, you're going to use an iron manganese zinc fertilizer. So they're usually, uh, usually these deficiencies kind of go hand in hand. Huh. Um, which I also thought was interesting. But, well, yeah. And wow. And I wonder, and I wonder if that's a pH thing with the manganese, you know, SO4, like really what that, like what's the actual mechanism. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're probably getting a little bit of a fuller feed on well. So it's a nice little uh, dual purpose thing. It, it's all. Yeah, yeah. 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 And of course, so many of these things by and large have to be born of, you know, trial and error. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, dive into zinc. 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 Yes. I'll let you take it away. 
Why not? Okay. Uh, zinc, zinkity zinc, zinc, zinc. Symbol ZN, a topping number 30. It is a brutal metal at room temperature, the 24th most abundant element in the crust. So obviously there's a bit of it there, no doubt. First mined over 2,000 years ago. Uh, 20% of the world's zinc is used in brass. Um, thought that was much, cool. That is cool. How, how much brass is actually even? I mean, but, well, so my kid plays the saxophone. And like, I actually had to go get him a ligature yesterday and I uh, walked in and it was like a whole store of brass. All right. Okay, you know okay, what I mean? All right, I, I, all right. It's not, it's not like the seventies <laughs> right, where right. everybody had brass, everything. So I get where you're at with that. Right, 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 right. It right. is pretty, uh, it is pretty funny. It is mining <clears> open <throat> pits, normal underground methods. Again, a lot, like a lot of these, <clears throat> yeah. China, Peru, Australia, India, USA, these large countries, uh, no surprises there. Plant available forms being zinc sulfate, zinc ammonium nitrate. Uh, no, it's the, the there's a divalent of the, there's oh, a divi, a divalent, divalent ionic, ionic form, form, which is zinc two plus and chelated zinc. Chelated zinc again that that leads me to believe it can get bound up a bit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, not exactly sure. It's I don't think it's it doesn't seem to be as directly uh, uh, causal related to pH as as uh, iron is, but something's grabbing it and holding on to it. What does it actually do for the plants? Component of a lot of enzymes. Surprise, surprise. Similar with a lot of other micros involved with electron transfer. Yep. The fact that it has that divalent ion form the two plus makes me uh, not surprised there helps in the production of auxins as which, you were talking about yeah, with auxins yep, before yeah yep, which is the main growth hormone in plants interestingly enough you know auxins can function as many different things you know it can be uh you know we have auxins that are used for uh um root production, for example, to initiate root production. <clears throat> Oxins are also what's there coming out of the top apical meristem that are that, that's reducing lateral branching, right? Yep. Um, it's also, interestingly enough, what's involved in how a plant knows where up is when that first radical shoots out, right? So, interestingly enough, and it also works opposite in roots versus shoots. So, a very quick explanation. You got the root, you got the radical coming out. The oxins fall to the bottom of it based on gravity. It actually slows down the, the cell reproduction on the bottom side so that the top turns down and goes into the ground yep. does the opposite when when you start getting the cotyledons out does the opposite for stem it'll it'll fall to the bottom side still but actually increases cell production on that st- bottom side to to make it go up wacky stuff folks really cool shit the amazing um, plant the amazing plant uh it's needed since the size chlorophyll like all these other ones and carbohydrates building blocks that's why you're going to see these things like um um uh, chlorosis and obviously anytime you have something that's involved in chlorophyll production if it's not there you're going to see some yellowing um how do you how do you take care of it um pretty much just a a fuller spray you know uh, again pretty 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 mobile in plants it is mobile in plants uh, and it's it, it, it was actually funny because I when I was doing this there was another source that said it was immobile in plants here's the thing i have found at least with some of these as you get farther down the list Believe it or not, there's been less and less um, research has spun it on them. Mm-hmm. So one, as you mentioned, harder and harder to find information on it. Number two, there does seem to be sometimes some differing information with mobile immobile. I've seen that as well. And it also, by the way, it also does activate enzymes to make some proteins, particularly RNA and DNA. So going to be uh, uh, very involved in cell division then at that point. So yep. um, that's very cool. And obviously that means if, if there's a deficiency there, any type of reproductive issues slow, are going to have problems. Slow, slow growth. Yep. 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 You know, lack of stem elongation, yellowing, uh, new growth has radically twisted blades, mm-hmm. uh, can be locked out and high in pH. So just similar, like, to, just like similar, similar to iron. iron. Yep. Um, and that's why we saw that zinc, manganese, zinc, iron, iron, manganese, everything gets locked for, out together. Yeah. You know, so uh, a good way to treat it is a foliar kelp spray. Which is interesting, right? And, and you're yep. like, oh, wow, the kelp actually has enough zinc in it. <clears throat> and of course, a proper fuller spray in deficiencies in an annual plant, if done correctly at the right time, do work. But try and do something a little bit different the next time around if need be. If you know that's coming on, you know, a plant that happens to be, you know, weirdly deficient in some of these things. And again, remember symptoms, all these things have the same symptom. How the hell do you know if it's iron? How the hell do you mm-hmm. know if yeah, it's, it's zinc? So again, one balanced, balanced nutrition, balanced fuller sprays if you are doing them, but just keep that in mind, folks. It's a general, it's a symptom. It's a general and, and plant And if response. you're really having issues that you can't track down, always leaf tissue samples. Leaf tissue samples. And more and more, I mean, you know, we're here in Colorado. Colorado State will take, you know, uh, leaf yeah. tissue samples and they're not that much. I mean, typically I think around $20, something like that. So let's get into the Molly. Molly. Molybdenum. Molly. One of my favorites. Molly. Uh, Symbol of MO, atomic number 42. Uh, One of the things I thought it was interesting is it's named from the Molybdos Greek meaning lead, which was 
it was originally confused with. Huh. Uh, I've known for a long time that it was used as a metal alloy. I remember talking about they use it in engines and stuff and sure. cylinder walls and stuff like that. Uh, it was first discovered in the 1700s. Again, it's mined. Um, one of the biggest mines that we know about, and this is why it's close to my heart, is in Climax, Colorado. Climax, Colorado. Uh, you know, on the way over to Leadville, if you're driving over the mine, that big open mine to the left, that is a molybdenum mine. Some of the other countries that produce it are China, Chile, Peru. Um, plant available forms are obviously silica. Mm. Um, and then the M004, which is the lib- molybdate ion. Molybdate what it does ion. for plants is necessary for the synthesis of organic phosphorus compounds. It's needed in order for rhizobia and frankia bacteria to fix nitrogen in the root nodules of the legumes. And the rhizobia bacteria is the ones that specifically involved in that nitrogen fixing. Yep. So, you know. Yep. Helps transform nitrogen into aminos and it is mobile in the plants. It is mobile, which, you know, it, it, in general, it seems the micros are less mobile, but this is definitely one that that, that is mobile. Yeah. Um, and, and that being said, deficiencies are very rare. It affects the leaves in the middle of the plant being mobile. Um, too little leads to build up of nitrates and chlorosis in, in older leaves. So again, if you see- because it's mobile, if, so it's yeah, going to move up. If you see some really to. rich green leaves in the middle of your plant, but again- Chances of you seeing that, not really, not really that common. And um, if you do, just go ahead and throw in a little ruby because, uh, as you know, <laughs> look, a friendly little tip about the ruby fulvic, right? So if you look on the back, um, well, first off, it says F U L, you know, plus symbols, you know, uh, it's dirty, labeled as molybdenum. Dirt, dirty little secret. It's registered as a molybdenum fertilizer, but it's only 0.001%, yep. just enough to get it registered. But also keep in mind with a molybdenum, the only real issue you could run into in a farm situation, it is bad for ruminants. So it is bad for cows. Um, and it's something that even on the back of the bottle, um, you'll see that kind of warning on anything that has any Molly registered in it. Now, that Molly registration is there to get it in that we also, we all know it's really in there. We know it's in there. Nine of them, nine different sources of it. Dude, we'll just leave it at that. We, <laughs> pl- we plug through pretty quick. We're doing all right. We're now at the final one. Well, you know, I didn't include sodium because that's a questionable one, but that, yep. we're, we're down to nickel. So why don't you take us away on the nickel? <sighs> and we've been trying to go fast. We didn't want this episode to be too sticky because we, we knew we didn't had want a lot it to be to boring through. for yeah, people, yeah, but we yeah. want people to understand, you know, one of the biggest things that we always talk about is solubility, availability, and quality of what you're feeding these plants. And when you get down to some of these things that are 0.01% or 0.1% of the earth's crust or copper, metal, whatever, where you source these things is incredibly important. Sourcing's important. What you feed your plants is definitely fire in, fire out. Yeah. Um, it affects okay. the outcome. Nickel, nickel, nickel. Get so into this the is, nickel. This is besides uh, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon, which we are going to do a final episode yep. on that. Yep. Um, but but those are you <clears throat> know those are the true macros, but a little bit different. Um, nickel is the final final micronutrient symbol Ni on the periodic table, atomic number of twenty eight. It is a ferromagnetic metal. It's usually found with iron, yep. right? Couple, yep. so you're going to yep. see that in the same uh, same mines and everything. Many people don't recognize it as essential because its functions are very obscure. But as you go down the line, as I mentioned. There's less and less research that's been done on it, even to the point undoubtedly we know it does something. We know it does something. Nickel's not nickel's not even the last micronutrient. But when you get that fine, yeah, you get down to sodium and realistic. People say with the silica, even though we included it, the the testing is tough to to, what it is is testing is tough to definitively say this is absolutely necessary. We Mm -hmm. know that there's more out there, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Undoubtedly, there there there's more out there. Um, Again, we also like to talk about plant beneficial, which Silica, you know, we we squarely put in officially a plant beneficial uh, nu- uh, nutrient, not necessarily technically a, a, um, a plant uh, um, necessary, necessary. But yeah. you know, again, I, I feel like these are, I feel like these are kind of they're important though. You well, know? right, right. It all, so, it all affects everything. Um, as far as nickel goes, use has been found as far back as 3500 BC, first isolated in 1751. Um, the dude who did that, it mistook it for copper. Mistook it for copper. <laughs> um, usually around 1% to 2% of the iron ore. So it's going it to be found in there. Yep. yep, it's yep, one, yep. You know, if you if you know, any, like when we talk about these processes and we say something's 45% and then they have all this other stuff. That's the other stuff. And right. they eventually, they have streams that they're able to filter off all these different well, things. Well, and, and, and even going back just just slightly, you know, one thing I like to make the point of, you know, I remember even when we were in school, it's like, okay, nitrogen does this. Okay, phosphorus does this. And potassium, 
Oh, yeah. It does a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not kidding. You know what I mean? That, that, that was, or you get to a point where it's like, and that's all we know. And in fact, the last month, that's all been a guess. Or we know the beginning and we know the end. We know it goes in as nitrite nitrogen and we know it comes out as nitrate nitrogen and that's what's up. Take what we have no idea what happens in between it. Anyway, mysterious shit, right? So um, as far as largest producers, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, Sudbury, Canada, or Canada. So in which I actually, I, so I knew different. about the Canada one because that's where they source a lot of the nickel for the nickel cadmium batteries for electric vehicles. Got you. So and I so knew that's also supposed to be like a fairly high meter. Yeah, I region, knew. Right? I knew that part yeah. about that part. So I mean. So yeah. also a uh, uh, region of France out there, or France out there in the Pacific, New uh, Caledonia, uh, or. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Caledonia. Right. Caledonia. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Russia. Um, Eagle Mine in the UP. Uh, yeah, it's the yeah. only mine. So up in the Upper Peninsula. Yep. And that's actually shout a pretty. Shout out to Michigan. The that's UP, a pretty. That's, that's a pretty new mine. When I was researching it, there was a mine that had shut down in the 90s. And then this mine, I want to say, opened in 2013. So. Uh, plant available form NI2 Plus. What it does for plants works as a cofactor to enable uh, uh, urease or, or to catalyze the conversion of urea into an ammonium ion. Without it, urea conversion is impossible so obviously you're, i'm just guessing here you're gonna have chlorosis issues and things like that yeah, with this yeah, yeah, wow is yeah. this uh, it's a little bit of a recurring uh anyway just kidding it is it, immobile it is immobile um when it is absent nitrogen accumulates in the leaves can result in leaf tip burn because nitrogen comes in all as mass flow so that's the only one that you can truly burn with you mm -hmm. can definitely have deficiencies lockouts things like that the only thing that you can really burn with is nitrogen the plant can't say no that nitrogen's flying right in with the water so at the end of the day it is what it is so i'm glad you brought this book in and uh this you, seemed like the right time i I, I, th I think so you know we've been talking a lot about ipm stuff we've been talking yeah, about good deficiency we've been talking about and obviously this is everything right it's talking about deficiencies it's talking about uh, uh pest diseases it's talking about um you it's know. an old one too this one's been around this one's been around a while and it's been in a limited release i know yeah, i have I one but i, I got it right when i it came think out. they re i think they maybe republished it and for those um, of us with uh, bad eyes what book is that this it's is the marijuana the, garden marijuana Saber handbook garden for Saber. healthy plants i think i saw a later edition that had there's been an update that had the handbook yes, for healthy plants part it, the, that part was changed like yeah. it was a different name um grandpa you want to scroll down a little bit just a touch just a touch just, there we are but, um, you know, usually utilizing a handy field guide style book, this book is divided into five sections by problem type, pests, disease, environmental stresses, nutrient deficiencies, and controls. Problems are alphabetized within each section. So that's a really nice thing in this book is if you're going through the nutrients, you go to N. Right. I don't want to open it because it's like falling apart. You know what well, I mean? Well, but I also love that. Like, I, I do like that it's field guide style. Like, yeah. for, like you yeah, can yeah, put yeah. that in your back pocket. Yeah, I, and walk I, through the I generally like if I'm in a big commercial facility, I'll have this in my office so that guys can come in. Sure. Um, you know, problems are alphabetized within each section, identified in full color photographs. Quick overview of the problem and likely causes is followed by the author's recommendation for fast and easy solution. Um, this is a book I've had in the library for a very, very long time uh you know we used to use it in one of the first commercial facilities i had around here a buddy of mine named zorch actually brought it in there zorch. Um, Shout out so, to zorch. yeah one of the old schoolers but it's definitely a helpful guide if you're having any issues um you know and not for nothing said Rosenthal. It said Rosenthal so, as well. Yeah yeah good um, old Eddie. We got some supporter shout outs a big shout out to the homie Marshall Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace. Uh, always killing it. He's been running a bunch of gear. Uh, always running the new millennium. He's running, I think he's running that at Dante's on the, on the new millennium. I believe he's running that number um, six. Yeah, right now. But he, he's always running great gear. Uh, he's the man. Also want to shout out to the press club. He doesn't use all our stuff, but he does use our silica, uses our ruby, uses our winner. Excellent. And he is about one of the best hash makers in town when it comes to rosin. He's got a really cool cut of uh, S one pre 98 that is just oh that fan, one yeah oh okay. yeah, yeah fan, i know the one fan, now, fantastic now and know. he's you know he used Some to work he used had. to work at the htg in town so he's one of the grocery store homies and he definitely nice. we're gonna he has a question we're gonna address in the questions episode question um, episode so is coming out, soon shout out to the press club um you have any supporter shout outs no, I think that's I mean, I think that's good for now. You know what and I mean? Then, uh, so the shop shout outs, we got Green World. 
out in Oklahoma City, Big Green World, tons of our product there. Anything you need, go hit up Green World right there in Oklahoma City. Big supporter of ours for a long time. Thank you, Green World. Appreciate your guys' support. Love those guys. Love those guys. And, and last, keeping it green, Green Coast. I was going to say, we kind of say, I, it, it kind of ended up like, I was like, yeah, screw it. Let's keep it a green. Green, green. Uh, green Coast, which is uh, also part of the Hydro Builder family. So you will see them. That's New England Hydro. That's Way to Grow. That's a Green Coast out west. Uh, that is Hydro Builder Online. I don't think I'm missing anything. If I am, I apologize. No, but that is a, it, uh, I think I did pretty good with that, actually. Nailed it. Nailed I nailed it. it. I nailed it. Guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we knew this episode was going to be a little sticky. We knocked it out, did it in about 45 minutes perfect yeah hopefully, um, and hopefully you get some good information out of it you know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the rest we're gonna do uh, and if you have hydrogen any, and oxygen if carbon you guys want things to, to us to peel into again we're here to learn right along with you if there if you have suggestions if you have topic suggestions social suggestions please reach out uh tag us with jug dealers on the ig with your nug shots so we can feature some of you guys uh have any questions, keep them putting out there. We'll probably periodically do a question show mm -hmm. with all always as well. Inter interspersing them through the shows. Um, whatever you got, honestly, next time, whatever you guys want it. and not, not for nothing. We got, uh, we got great guests coming up too. We got, some absolutely. Cool, we got some cool guests ca scheduled this year. So we definitely want to talk about, you know, interesting things. So, so we, we love you guys. Thank you very much. Time to take a dab. Let's <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. See you next Peace time out. from the Jug Den.